with the hiss from. He's saying, don't eat me. I'm not gonna eat you, mama. All right, I'm setting up another bioactive vivarium. This one's gonna be for bugs. I just got Madagascar hissing cockroaches. I have this five gallon tank. I'm gonna start them in. I only have four females and one male. So this is plenty enough space for a starter colony. Um, since it's gonna be bioactive and I'm growing living plants in here, I'm starting with a, um, maybe 60% of a high quality potting soil, then about 40% of this Vita sand as um, calcium enriched. It's good for digging just in case anything wants to burrow. So first things first, I'm gonna mix those two together. All right, that's in there nicely mixed. I'm gonna add some rainwater to moisten everything. Definitely prefer rainwater so that it doesn't have any chlorine or any anything that's gonna inhibit microbial growth. Out here in my garden bed, and I noticed I have some really beautiful moss. So I'm gonna dig that up and transplant that into my area. I was just at Trader Joe's and they had these two cute little house plants for six bucks. Um, I'm not sure what they are, I can identify them later, but house plants generally mean they need low light and they're probably not gonna get huge, so I think it's gonna be adorable to put them in there. All right, this is looking cool already. Living moss, a couple of living plants. The soil's alive. I used a little bit of compost in there, so I already saw little critters in the soil. It's gonna be a, an enclosed ecosystem. Another important thing in setting up a Madagascar hissing cockroach colony is they are really, really good climbers. So I have just a wire um, lid for this. That's probably good enough for right now because all mine are adults, so they're three, four inches long. But I do wanna rub Vaseline on the inside, like inch, the top inch of Vaseline on all four sides so that they can't climb through the Vaseline. They can climb, climb up glass, but they cannot climb up Vaseline. So I'm gonna smear some Vaseline in there. Okay, I'm a middle school science teacher and this is how we were keeping them. The district gave us four females like this for classroom experiments. Let's relocate these ladies to their new home. The female. Yeah, you like that? More space in there. Come here, big mama. Oh. Hear that? That's where they get the hiss from. He's saying, don't eat me. I'm not gonna eat your mama. She doesn't want to leave now. Super docile animals. They don't bite or sting or anything, but they're they got spines on their legs that are kind of pokey. There we go. Come on, mama. See how four of these have the same color pattern, same shaped head. Almost little bumps, but not existent horns. And their antenna are really smooth and slender. Those are all giveaways, these are females. Now the district only had females, so I had to go to the pet shop and buy a male. Now the males are a little bit smaller than the females. They are sexually dimorphic, so that means you can look at them and tell the difference. See, he's smaller, he has different color abdomen, he's much color, um, lighter. His horns on the top of his head are much more, much more pronounced. And his antenna are a lot thicker. So this is definitely a male. Oops. First time holding this guy, and he's nice too. 
Look how pretty he is. Very cool. Well, he just got totally lucky because he just came from a colony of like 500 in one big garbage bin where they get at the pet shop. Now he's gonna have the harem, his own little place with four ladies all to himself. Lucky stud. Come on, fix yourself. <laughs> All right, very cool.